What's up, guys? Well, a lot to say. A lot to say, and I hope I can uh, get it all in and not miss anything, man. First off, let me give a round of applause, and let me give a salute to both men. To both men. You know, this fight uh, lived up to the hype. Um... In some ways, maybe it exceeded the hype. Um, <clears throat> both men uh, should be proud. Nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, a bit of a classic, in my opinion. Um, and I have respect for both men um, coming out of this fight. Uh, you know, these guys took on... Uh, you know, both guys took on a tough fight. And what some could say is undisputed. Devin Haney and his crowd might disagree. But, um, you know, they took on each other and, um, you know, it was a hell of a fight, man. Now, me personally, I am, um, I'm not as excited and over the moon as I should be because, uh, I did not profit any money tonight. I lost money, even though I picked the right guy. Once again, a situation where I got greedy instead of taking the, uh, better than even money on the, the money line, I... I, you know, I tried to get more value with the knockout. I thought that T.O. would, would stop the guy. Um, I thought if he won that he would win by stoppage and, and not by decision. I thought if it was a decision, it would go to Lomachenko. And when they were saying the score cause, you know, when it went to a decision, I was nervous because I didn't know if they would give it to the right guy. Uh, but they did. Um, Tiffimo Lopez clearly won this fight. Um... Andre Ward uh, should be ashamed of himself. Uh, what is wrong with Andre Ward, man? You know, I, I won't claim to watch all the ESPN cards, you know, uh, but this is the second time, guys. You know, he had a terrible scorecard with Ramirez and Postal. You know, uh, terrible. Even Tim Bradley was in disbelief over his scorecard. And now he had this fight a draw, a draw. Andre Ward scored this fight a draw. As a disgrace, man. If if there was an official scorecard, there would be an outrage, man. An outrage. Um, hell, Julie Letterman scored it, what, 119-109? Uh, hell, at least she scored it for the right guy. At least she had the guy who won the fight winning the fight. You know, I, I don't agree with that scorecard at all. But uh, at least she scored the guy winning the fight. You know, Andre Ward, I mean, that is... You know, you need to stick to boxing or, or just stick to commentating or, or, or teaching boxing or something. But they got to take him off score calls on ESPN, man. That is a disgrace. Um, I scored this fight 116-112 for Tiafimo Lopez. I think that was Steve Weisfeld who scored that fight 116-112 for, uh, for Tiafimo. And usually I do not agree with uh, Steve Weisfeld. Usually I, I criticize his score cards. But um, I must I must say that he was on the money. I am uh, going to box rig now. I'm going to type in uh, their names because I want to uh, give credit where credit is due. All right, uh, to the right. Um, let's see. Here we go. To the right judges and the right scorecards. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, he's saying I'm I'm not logged in. All right, but um, yeah, Tiafimo uh clearly won this fight. <sighs> you know, uh, Lomachenko started too late. Bottom line, he started too late. Uh, no, Tim Cheatham won sixteen one twelve is what it says. Uh, Steve Weisfield had it one seventeen one eleven, which uh you know was only one point. All for mine. He gave Lopez an extra round, uh, more one more round than I did. You know that's not a crime. But uh, Julie Letterman, uh, well, she only gave Lomachenko one round. You know, I'm not a Lomachenko fan. You know, not at all. But that's not right. <laughs> you know, I totally disagree with that. You know, and, and I wouldn't kick the guy while he's down. You know, uh, Lomachenko, uh, man, he 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 got a lot of respect for me in this fight. First off, he took this fight. He, he, he went for undisputed. He thought he could beat the guy. You know, this big, strong, uh, lightweight 
uh, who probably will be fighting at 140 and 147 soon. You know, a power puncher guy with speed. Um, he took on this tough, dangerous fight, man. You know, um, and uh, he got hit with, with with some hellacious shots, man. Uh, some of these shots, I bet a lot of guys in the world uh, would not have continued, would have been able to survive. And this guy who used to fight at 126 uh, was able to stay in the fight, go a full 12 rounds, taking all those body shots, you know, taking those shots to the head. I give it to the guy, man. Uh, he, you know, he, he, he can take a punch. He can take a punch, and he took this fight. So, I, I you know, Lomachenko, he has my respect. You know, even a loss, I, I respect this guy for taking this fight, for being tough in this fight and going the distance, man. Um, but uh, he did not win this fight. In my opinion, this was uh, Lomachenko versus Salido Part 2. You know, it was that fight all over again. Uh, I have said it before. Uh, Orlando Salido laid out the groundwork for how, how to beat Lomachenko. And Tiafimo basically uh, did that, you know. You know, when he was winning the fight, he basically established himself in the middle of the ring. As I said, he kept uh, uh, Lomachenko on the outside just like Salido did. You know, he would push him back towards the ropes like Salido did. And then he would reset back to the center of the ring. The, at the same exact fight. The same exact fight. Um, and then as, as the fight went on, Tiafimo started to slow down a little bit. Just like Orlando Salido slowed down at the end of their fight. You know, uh, you know, getting tired. Uh, but Lopez being, you know, younger and overall a better boxer and technician, uh, you know, hell, he was able to uh, come back and have a dominant 12th round. You know, it was just, it was a repeat of that fight, man. That's all it was. Um, let me give you my breakdown of the fight. Uh, round 1, 10, 9, Lopez. Easy round for Lopez. Loma did nothing. Jab, straight rights, body shots. Round two, 10-9 Lopez, another dominant round. Loma only landed one significant punch, a left. Lopez establishing himself in the center of the ring and keeping Loma on the outside. Round three, 10-9 Lopez, Lopez dominating the fight. Loma not doing much, only landed two punches at the end of round. Lopez throwing and landing more, all right? Uh, round four, 10-9 Lopez, more of the same. Loma moving and doing nothing. Tio doing all the work. Round 5, 10-9 Lopez. Loma getting dominated. Doing nothing but moving away from the power. Looking like he just wants to survive. Alright. Round 6, 10-9 Lopez. Close round. Loma's best round. Lopez wins with two best punches at end of round. Alright. So maybe that's a round that could have been a you know a swing round. Alright. But uh, I gave it to Tiafimo because of... When it was close and even, in my opinion, uh, he landed those two great punches at the end of the round. All right. Round seven, 10 9 Lopez. Loma opening up more. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tio, for the second time, made a mistake and went near the ropes. Got hit. Overall, still dominating and controlling the fight. You know, and that that was when he would, he would get caught, man. You know, as I have said, I've said it uh, plenty of times. Don't go against the ropes against Lomachenko. That's what Anthony Crowley did. That's what Nicholas Wallace was doing. His guys were giving up their size. You know, they were letting uh, Lomachenko with, with his with his footwork and movement, you know, with his uh, volume of punches coming on the inside, pushing them backwards. And, of course, when whenever uh, TFM didn't go backwards, which I give him credit for, uh, then at times there would be headbutts, you know, and thankfully he did not get cut by one till the end of the fight. All right. Um, but, you know, the, that's the key, man. You do not let the guy drive you backwards, man. Stay established in the middle of the ring against Lomachenko. All right. Okay, round eight, 10-9 Loma. Very close round. Could go either way or be even. Uh, Loma's most active round. Once he tastes the power, he stopped throwing and coming forward. All right. Round nine, 10-9 Loma. Loma had success. Another round that could go either way or be even. All right, so, you know, I'm, I'm saying that. I'm, I'm pretty sure Julia Letterman gave that round to um, to Tia Fimo. All right, I, I would like to know which round she gave to um, to uh, Lomachenko. I wonder if, if I can access that on Box Rick, if that is on here already, uh, showing a breakdown. I, I would love to know which round 
she gave him. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can get it to come up now. Uh, let's see, it's moving slow. Uh, maybe the internet's blowing up over this upset victory. <laughs> All right. Um, and now, now I'm getting air messages and shit. All right, let me go back to my scorecard. All right, uh, I'll get to that later. All right. Um, let's see. I think that was, uh, yeah, that was round nine. Okay, round 10, 10, 9, Loma. Lopez making mistakes, uh, giving Loma the center of the ring and going against the ropes. Could be hitting a wall, slowing down, and fading. You know, I was getting very nervous in that round. Uh, you know, uh, he was... Yeah, you know, he he was not letting his hands go. He was getting hit. He was moving away. You know, I, I thought that the guy could gas and not be able to finish the fight and could have got stopped. You know, I was getting very concerned. All right, uh, let's see. Um, where are we at? Here? Round eleven, ten nine, Loma. Loma's best round. Lopez made Loma respect him and stopped coming in near end of the round with great body work. All right. Uh, so the eleventh round was Loma's best round. All right, that might have been the round that Julie Letterman um uh gave him. Hard to imagine why she would give him the, the tenth. Uh, from from what I have, uh, I have let's see, I have the eighth close, uh, very close when I gave the Loma, and I have the ninth round saying it go either way. Um, let's see, the tenth, I'm not seeing where I'm saying it, where Lopez really had any success, and uh, the eleventh, unless you just gave him. The round for the, you know, the body work at the end, which that wasn't enough. Uh, like I said, that was Loma's best round, 11. All right. And, of course, round 12, 10-9, uh, Tiafimo. Uh, that was the only round he won after the seventh on my card. A dominant round hurt Loma near the end of the fight. And I'm glad he did not listen to his dad. It just coasted into a win. Uh, you know, he went out, uh, you know, with exclamation point uh, to try to stop the guy, uh, which was what I had money on. All right. Um, you know, and that came out to a 116-112 victory for Tiafimo Lopez. You know, um, the rat guy won the fight. There was no robbery, no screw job. This was not a draw. Uh, I, I don't agree with 119-109. That, that is totally discrediting, uh, Lomachenko. And he had, I, I had him winning four rounds. He had four good rounds, uh, in this fight. Uh, four rounds, but I thought he won, all right? But um, that's discrediting what the guy did and uh, the effort that he put up. You know, he took a, he took a lot of uh, shots, body shots, uh, punishment. You know, I, I give the guy credit, man. You know, he fought a power punch. He was taking body shots, man. Uh, you know, some 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 pretty significant body body punch throughout that fight, and uh, he survived. He did not go down. So the guy has my he has my respect, man. You know, I I, I kind of clown the guy, his arrogance and all that. But the fact that he took this fight, the fact that he 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 went a full twelve rounds with this guy, even though he got out out hit, out boxed, uh, you know, beat up in my opinion, you know, um, he he has my respect, man, you know. Uh, so you know, salute to uh, Lomachenko, man, you know. Uh, but Tiafimo, congrats to you, uh, you know. It, it's it's hard for me to say lightweight, man. Devin Haney needs to be on, on Instagram, Twitter. He needs to be on social media saying there's no undisputed without me holding up his belt. Saying that after I get done with Gamboa, I want you next. You know, he needs to be calling for that. Eddie needs to be doing Instagram and Twitter posts calling for that. You know, that they want that fight next. You know, saying that there's no undisputed without Devin Haney. You know, uh, and, and that would be a great fight to see, man. You know, Tiafimo Lopez and Devin Haney, oof. That would be a great fight. But, you know, Tiafimo Lopez, and he in the driver's seat, man. He has a lot of options, man. You know, he could have a, a, a big money rematch with uh, Lomachenko. Uh, hell, if, if they did it on ESPN, hell, it might, be do, it might do bigger numbers than it did tonight. Uh, instead of pay-per-view, you know, um, he could, that would be a, a huge payday. Where he would be the A-side and get, a, a, a you know, millions. Uh, he could do that or... He could move up. He could cash in his WBO, and uh, I would think become. Uh, I would not the mandatory for um, for uh, Ramirez, but once Ramirez and, and Taylor have that fight, you know uh, they'll be undisputed champ. And they said that 
the winner would fight whoever the number one contender is in WBO. Uh, that mandatory. Well, hell, if if let's say if Josh Taylor won, which I think he will, and then he cashed in that WBO and moved up to fight Terrence Crawford, then hell, or Kale Brook if Kale Brook wins the fight, uh, then hell he um it could be a vacant WBO and Tiafimo could fight the number one contender at 140. And uh, become a champ at 140 and a player at 140 immediately. You know, so the guy has options, man. Or he could fight Devin Haney. You know, in a, in a uh, I mean, that would be a big fight. You know, that would be, that, that could be a, a pay-per-view fight. You know, the zone could pay out the ass for that fight, ESPN, you know. So the guy, he's he's got some big-time options, man. You know, Lomachenko rematch, Devin Haney, or, you know, move up to 140. Cash in the WBO and uh, become the immediate mandatory, and uh, I would think that that once once that WBO belt becomes uh, vacant, you know, if if uh, they agree to whoever the number one contender is, I don't know the guy's name, but if he, uh, you know, if he agrees that hey, let them have the undisputed fight, which I I heard he has said that, and that they can vacate and move up, and then he'll fight Tiafimo for the the vacant belt, you know. I'm, I'm pretty sure Tiafimo would be a sizable favorite in that fight uh, and would be a, a two-division champ, an undisputed champ um, already at, at 23 years of age. So, you know, man, uh, the guy has uh, some big-time options, man. Um, I, I want to see if I can get, get this scoring to pop up again, man, because uh, I want to see if it's on here. I want I want to see what round. Julie Letterman gave um gave Lomachenko let's see. Hmm. Let me go back. I'm on the about page. But I wanna see. Let's see. Look at the scoring page. It, it will not load. Okay, it's it's empty. It, it does not have it doesn't have the individual round scores, it just has the the final scores for each um judge. Alright. Um maybe that would be added later. Uh I hope so. I would love to see which round she gave Lomachenko and which one she did not give him. Um but you know I think that's it guys. I think I've covered everything. Um I'm very satisfied with my scorecard. Uh everything that they said in the telecast for it. Joe Test tour at the end of the at the end of the telecast was saying the uh, number of landed punches that uh, Lombachenko landed, uh, I think in the first uh, six or seven rounds, the ones that he was losing without doing much, you know, he was landing like one, two, five punches around, you know, like hardly landing anything. And, um, you know, they, they said, like they said, he, he turned on it near the end of the fight, but it was it was a bit too late. And I uh, only had him winning four rounds. Um you know, I was as, as I was watching the fight, I was thinking, I was like, was this uh, what he wanted to do? Because I think he said something about, you know, taking him into deep waters and drowning him. You know, did he think that uh, Tiafimo would get tired, you know, just survive the, the early onslaught, let the guy punch himself out? He has not had many 12-round uh, fights in his career, uh, you know, and just take him to the end of the fight and then try to stop him, you know? If, you know, is that what he was thinking? You know, maybe so, but um, it did not work out for him. You know, it, it backfired on him, uh, and he was tasting the guy's power and um, ultimately respected it and did not dive in like, like he did not respect it, you know. So I think that's it, guys. I think I have covered everything, man. Um, yes, I am a bit, uh, you know, not happy that I didn't profit off my, uh, you know, picking the right guy to win the fight. Hell, I I got greedy with the knockout. I thought that, you know, I, I thought I didn't think that Lomachico would be able to stand up to this guy's punches, man. You know, and I, I give Lomachico all the credit in the world. He took this guy's punches for a, few, a full 12 rounds, man. A, a big 135 pounder with, you know, one punch knockout power. And this guy used to fight at 126. I, I give Lomachico all the credit in the world, man. He survived. Uh, but he did not win this fight. Uh, he was talking about it at, at the end with looked like tears in his eyes, talking about he wanted to look at the tape that, uh, you know, he thought he won, but he wasn't going to make a big stink about it at the moment. You know, he didn't win that fight, man. That was, that was, uh, him fighting Salido all over again, in my opinion. 
you know. So I think that's it, guys. You know, let me know what you think. Lived up to the hype. Again, salute. <laughs> Round of applause. Congrats to both men. Uh, a memorable fight, memorable night on ESPN. We all got to see it. And uh, can't wait to see and hear how the Boston world reacts. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll check in soon. Thanks for watching.